The story continues as Earth seeks clarification about the sudden battle. The Queen explains that since he didn't experience the event with a fairy companion, she wants him to go through the process of fighting her. Whether he wins or not isn't crucial, as the Queen intends to reward him with some of her power regardless. However, if he does win, she will give him an extra bonus in the form of even more power. Earth's fairy player name disappears once he agrees to these terms. Meanwhile, in the real world, the executives of the VR gaming company gather, noting that the event has reached its climax. They eagerly watch to see how this battle will unfold. Back in the game, the other players eagerly await as Earth gets ready with his equipment. During this time, he also thinks about how to win. Earth knows that the Fairy Queen's magic is powerful and versatile. He's particularly wary of her high explosion spell, which she used to defeat Glad. Earth's only advantage is that he has seen her fight once before. He also doubts she has experience fighting an archer while participating in the tournament. Earth can't believe that the combination of seemingly weak skills he chose has turned out to be so helpful as an archer. He's aware that if the battle drags on, the queen will adapt to his fighting style, which would negate his advantage. Earth realizes that he can't win by fighting fairly, so his only option is to fight cunningly. He readies his bow and various types of potions, confirming his readiness to the queen. The system summons the fighting arena and signals the start of the battle. Earth uses his power slide to get to the side of the queen and fires an arrow at 70% of his strength to test her. The fairy tries to counter with a wind cutter spell, but the arrow cancels it. Earth is pleased because this suggests that at full strength, his arrow might overpower her. Without wasting any time, the queen follows up with a fire attack, but Earth manages to dodge it. He retaliates with a stronger arrow, dispelling the last fireball and hitting the queen in the shoulder. The pain causes her to drop her staff, and the crowd, including Zwei and Millie, cheers in shock at Earth's direct hit on the fairy. The queen fairy is surprised when Earth counters her magic. She realizes she's at a disadvantage in a ranged battle, so she tries to get closer to him. However, Earth doesn't want her near and wants to keep his distance. He takes out a potion, making her think he's going to drink it. She prepares a lightning attack to stun him, but Earth anticipates this move, remembering she used it in her fight with Glad. Instead of drinking the potion, he drops it, and a purple cloud of smoke fills the area. The queen dashes into it but soon realizes it's poison. Earth explains that he made it from the suffocation herb. She can't cast her spells in the poison, and he starts his attack by throwing some explosion potions. They bring the queen to her knees while also clearing the poison. She regrets not banning the use of items, but Earth is vigilant with a loaded arrow aimed at her. He shares his opinion about humans being weak creatures, and that's why they must find different ways to defeat the strong. The queen decides to create an earth wall around herself to protect against Earth's attacks. Millie is worried that Earth can't attack while she's surrounded by walls and wonders what he'll do next. Earth uses his sneak skill to hide himself, impressing Zwei. Meanwhile, the queen is perplexed as she can't sense his presence anymore. She speculates that he might be waiting for her magic to deplete, so she decides to come on the offensive. She drops her guard and quickly attacks, but Earth is nowhere to be found until he appears behind her, informing her that she's wide open. He grabs her with his metal whip, throwing her off balance by spinning her. She remains apprehended as he hits her with a spell, sliding charge. The queen falls to the ground, and Earth doesn't slow down. He performs a perfect gatling arrow, earning a six-hit combo and stunning her. Then, he uses his mirror arrow spell, adding three more arrows. He unleashes two more with his twin-fanged arrow attack. He uses fly and arrow twister, stunning her again with a 12-hit combo. Finally, he finishes with a kick using the wind booster spell, a 13-hit combo, and the queen doesn't have time to react. Her body crumbles in defeat, and the system crowns Earth the victor as the arena disappears. The cheers of thousands of players remind him that everyone witnessed his spectacular fighting style. The queen returned to the arena, and Earth stepped back, thinking she might be angry. But he noticed an aura around her, and he was surprised by how gracefully she accepted her loss. She even admitted to being overconfident. The queen considered this a learning experience and quickly moved on to give Earth his reward. She asked Earth to show her his broken fairy contract crystal, and the fairy king's ring. Earth thought it was the ring he found while exploring his first dungeon. The queen took these items and added a sixth light to the broken crystal, merging it with the ring. This fusion created a magnificent piece of jewelry. She tried to put the ring on Earth, but he resisted. He was afraid that it would cost him a lot, especially his sanity. However, the queen assured him that it wouldn't harm him. She used a buff spell on her hand and swiftly put the ring on him. Earth tried to remove it, but he couldn't. The system informed him that it was the 87th Queen's Ring. This piece of jewelry contained the power of six elemental fairies and was one of a kind. Unfortunately, it couldn't be removed once it was put on. Earth felt tears welling up when he realized this. 
The queen quickly returned to her kingdom before anyone could ask more questions. Everyone saw this as the official end of the event, and they clapped to express their happiness with the event and its excellent ending. Zwei was astonished that they had witnessed a marriage drama. Earth's epic battle was recorded and shared on the game's official website. This inspired many players to try the combination of wind magic and archery because they saw how powerful it could be. As a result, Earth became famous in the game. To escape the attention, Earth decided to go to a remote location where he could play quietly. However, he was surprised when the queen suddenly appeared from the ring. She informed him that the ring also served as a teleportation point and then tried to flirt with Earth, but he scolded her for neglecting her responsibilities and asked her to go back and rule her kingdom. But she complained about how boring it was and suggested she should take a break. The scene changed, and Earth went into town. However, he felt uneasy because everyone recognized him as the fairy queen's husband. Someone called out to him aggressively, trying to get his attention, but he thought they were talking to someone else. To avoid the spotlight, he decided to go hunting. The scene changes, and Earth looks at his ring, wanting to try something new. He meets the queen again and asks her about the Prism Nova spell, which he can learn because he has the ring equipped. She encourages him to try it out, so he captures a wild bear and casts the spell, turning it into stone. After a few more attempts, he figures out what the spell does. Earth goes back to his secluded camp, where he prepares meals for his food business. He shares that the spell affects all enemies in the area with multiple random status effects. The queen adds that there are many different status effects that can be inflicted on the target, including paralysis and petrification, although they have low odds of occurring. She also warns him that the cooldown period for the spell is quite long. When the queen reaches for a piece of food, he playfully hits her with a fan, reminding her not to eat his customers' meals. She mentions that all the food in the fairy kingdom is so sweet, and she craves something savory to balance it out. She reveals that being a ruler is the most challenging job in the kingdom, illustrating it by flipping a pyramid upside down to show how she works tirelessly while those beneath her have fewer responsibilities. Earth acknowledges the pressure she's under, but their conversation is interrupted by Nazar, who confronts Earth for ignoring him. Earth recalls the earlier incident and assures Nazar that he didn't realize Nazar was addressing him. Nazar introduces himself as a member of the Bow of Apollo Guild and starts giving a speech about their goal to help oppressed archers. He condescendingly tries to recruit Earth, but Earth just ignores him and finishes his meal with the Queen before leaving. Earth informs Nazar that he's not interested, which leaves Nazar confused. The queen stays with Earth until his shift is almost over, and he sends her back to her kingdom with some food, which makes her happy. Earth is excited that he'll have some peace now to work on his equipment. The next morning, he greets Black when he enters the blacksmith shop, but he notices a crowd around him. Black explains that everyone wants to watch his work because he's famous now. Earth agrees but asks them to back off a bit, which they do immediately. He starts by upgrading his X-type compound hunting bow. He uses better quality wood and light metal for reinforcement resulting in a more powerful bow. Next, he works on upgrading his bladed shoes. He uses light metal for armor and steel for the spikes, enhancing their attacking power. He makes the blades modular for easier maintenance and moves them to the front of the shoe, making him more versatile with his kicks. After completing the leg blade, Earth practices a few kicks, and the observers applaud his craftsmanship. Earth prefers being seen as a weirdo, but he's excited about the final part of his loadout upgrade. He goes to the armor shop, where the merchant gives him the cap he ordered. He's surprised by its high quality, scoring a 9, and is pleased with the affordable price. Earth receives a message from the guild master of the Bow of Apollo and accepts the invitation to meet them later that night. The guild members welcome him, and Ayami apologizes for Nazar's behavior. They acknowledge his fame after the battle with the queen and as the only archer guild his joining will increase their guild's size. Earth forgives them, and Ayami reveals that they found Nazar used Earth's name to recruit members without permission, which shocks Earth. Ayami says that Nazar has been demoted and lost his privileges to invite new player, but wasn't banished. Earth is content with their response and says goodbye to the guild. In the real world, executives are impressed with Earth's performance and influence on other players. They decide to keep an eye on him because he has become a player they must watch closely. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like. Share and subscribe our channel for more anime recaps.